How many times did you try to create customized emails by changing the name of every person and updating the content? Instead of doing all this, you can just click one button and everything is sent. You spend the rest of the day at the beach without telling the boss, of course. Now I have a free workbook. The download link is in the description. And what I'm going to do is explain it to you, show you the code and explain it. So in case you need to modify it, it's very easy. For example, you want to add more attachments or you want to add more tables in the body of the email. Now, what are we waiting for? I don't know. So let's go. So let's look at what we have. We have a two, a CC. And by the way, in CC, I have two emails. You can have multiple. They have to be separated by a semicolon. And you can do the same here and here. By the way, if you go to this sheet, I have another macro that is transforming those emails that are in this format to this format. It's amazing, right? So if you like it, please just consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. For you, it's free. For me, it's worth gold. Let's come back. We have the subject, no problem. Then you have the body and you have this BR inside. I'm going to explain to you what it does. Then you have the attachment. For the attachment, we have the full pass of the attachment. So for example, if I go here, I have my virus. So I can go control C. I go back to my Excel sheet. I just paste it backslash and you have the file name. It could be a PDF. It could be an Excel. Anything is okay. Press enter. Finally, you have a range. So that's this table. If you want to add a table in the body of the email, you just put the range, for example, B7 to D10, which is this range. Now let's go to the code. And if you are a newbie and you don't have the developer tab, in order for you not to pull your hair and go crazy, let me show you file, more, options. You go to customize ribbon. And here you have to put a tick mark next to developer. Let's press OK. Go to Visual Basic under this tab. And here you can see under the Visual Basic Editor, you have three modules. The first one, we're going to double click on it and look at it. It has two macros. This is the first macro from sub to end sub. And this is the second one. The way it works is you have a macro that will go line by line in your Excel sheet. So to this line, send the parameter to another one that will create the email. Then go to the second line, send the parameters and the second macro will create another email and so on. The most important thing is you should not have a blank row. So all the emails have to be in order like this. Let's go back and understand what's happening. If you look at this launch multiple emails, first of all, we have a variable as a worksheet and we are assigning multiple emails. Now, multiple emails is the name of your worksheet. You can just copy paste it and put it here in case you're using this macro on a new workbook. After that, this is my counter I. I am going through my sheet until the sheet.range A and I.value is nothing. I want to execute this. So if you look here, this is A2. I have something in A2, it will execute it. Go to A3, something is there, I execute and so on. Until A5, nothing is there, I will stop. Now, how is it incrementing? You have i is equal to i plus 1 at the end of each loop. And in the middle, you're just calling the second sub. Those are the parameters of the second sub. We are sending the values that we have in A and I, B and I, C and I, etc. So first you have line 2, so that will be A2, B2, etc. Which are all the parameters that you have here. Now, in order to call the first sub, you need something like this. So I can go to insert illustrations, either icons or shapes, doesn't matter. Those are the icons, double click. I just selected one. You have it. You can just put it here, change the color, right click, assign macro, and you can assign this macro. As simple as this. Now, if you click on this button, it will just go to the first macro and call it, which will call the second macro for every line. Now in the second macro, I have all strings. So those are texts and one of them is called send to, send cc, send bcc, subject, etc. This is best practice because it's easy to understand. And I'm giving, for example, a and i to the first one, b and i to send cc and so on. Now let's look at what we have here. We have an object and we are assigning to this object 
Outlook application. Now, there is something that you need to be cognizant of. If you go to Tools, References, you have to take Microsoft Outlook Object Library. Whatever version you have, it's okay. If you don't, let's just go back, click, boom, explosion. So make sure you do this so you don't go crazy. I'm just going to click to stop the macro. Tools, References. It's not easy to find. You have to go to Microsoft. And there you go. You have it here. Let's put a tick mark. Perfect. Next, we are creating an email from this Outlook object. So we have a new email and we start. The difficult part is this range. What does it mean? Well, here I am selecting the range of my table, right? So B7 to D10, for example, the first one is blank. So I am creating the variable and I'm saying if what the user has put is not blank, then set this range to the string range. For example, we had B7 to D10, so that will become a range. If we had a blank, then this range will be just blank, right? And you can see this, this is the parameter, it is coming from G. Let's continue. Here we are creating the email. So with and with, this is a block where we create everything. And we have dot two, we are assigning this value. This value is from here, that's the parameter. And we are giving it, for example, in this case, A and I, which is to who I want to send the email. You have the same here for CC, BCC, subject, easy. The tough one is the body. So in my case, I'm using HTML body. By the way, you can use a normal body, but if you do, you will not be able to add this table that we want. Now for HTML body, I am assigning this variable body, which again is here, no problem. But where it gets complicated is the table. So if we go back, this is the body. And by the way, since this is HTML, BR means line break. So that means it will go to the line. Now, if you want to go to the line another time, you can just add another one like this and it will do. After adding the body, which is the performance, we want this table and that's in this range, right? So we go back and we have assigned this to our variable RNG. So that's our variable RNG. We have a condition and if this condition is true, we are adding to this HTML body. This is why you have it two times something. I will explain it to you. But first, let's look at the condition. We are saying if not RNG is nothing, that's difficult to understand. Forget the not. If RNG is nothing, which means we have nothing in our range, then we don't do anything, right? So I'm saying if not is nothing, which means if our range is something, then execute the action. And we can see that our range will be something if the user has inputted a range of cells in Excel. Now, this is actually a function that I also wrote. It is in P2. So double click. This function is taking a range and transforming it to HTML. We don't need to go into those details because it's very complicated. You just need to know the functionality that it has and use it appropriately. So we come back here. And we are passing this range, transforming it to HTML, so it goes into the body. Next, we have attachment. So attach is actually the pass of my attachment. It's also a variable and I'm feeding it from my Excel. So if I have a pass, then I'm adding it as an attachment. That's the pass. And then we display the email. If you want to send the email, you are very risky because if something goes wrong, you cannot stop it. So what you need to do in this case is this, you command display and you uncomment send. I'm just going to do the opposite because I prefer to read the emails before I send them. And finally, we are just clearing the memory. This is a best practice. So after doing all this, what you need to do is just have the data. We click and we get our emails. So notice this email, it has everything, two lines of data. The second one has three lines of data because I specified a different range to the right people also. And the final one has nothing because I didn't want to have any table in the email. So you can customize everything you want. You can change the body based on some formula here. It is insane, super dynamic. Now, the only problems you have is what if I want to have more than one attachment maximum? 
and more than one range. Let's start with the attachment. I'm just gonna copy paste this here and attach the same file. You can change the path, doesn't matter. So how do we fix the code to make it happen? Let's go back to our code and remember this is in column H. We go back to the first macro which is going line by line and then calling the make email. For this one, I need to add my H and pass it to the second macro, right? So we come here, space, let's just copy this. And here it will be H, as simple as this. I need to add a parameter here. So comma, space, underscore, press enter. Underscore means this is the same line of code, but now it's easier to read. So we're just gonna take the attachment here, control C and add another one. We're gonna call it attach to. So now we have an additional string, we can use it. Let's just go down. We have nothing to change. We just go here, control C, control V. And we say, if attach to is not blank, then just add the pass. If you have a third one, you do the same methodology. So now if we go back to Excel, I'm just gonna move those down. So we only have one email and let's check it out. So here it should produce only one email because you have a blank cell here. There you go, you have the virus two times, you can attach many files, this is how it works. Let's do the range. So I'm just gonna take this range, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and let's copy paste it in column I. So what do we do in this case? We come back, we need to add another value to send. So comma, space, underscore, enter, we go to the line. Let's just take this one, Ctrl C, we add it here, we add I, and we need to add another parameter here. So comma, we are looking at the range. So that's another range. We take it like this. Let's call it range two. Now here we have a little bit more work. We need to add a new variable range. So let's copy this and paste. Usually VBA is the best for copy pasting. So you have everything correct. So that's range, we call it range two. This is my string range two that I just created and set range two equal range of string range two. So now we have another range. So let's come back. We have this if statement. We just copy paste it and we change the variables. So that's range two and that will be range two. Let's try it out. We go here, click. There you go. You have two tables. Perfect. Final thing I want to show you and don't go away is how to combine the emails. So first let's understand how to use this function. That's the name of the function. And here you need to put the sheet name. So the sheet name is combine email. So I just took it from here, put it here. Then you need to put the column where I have the email. So that's column A. Where do the emails start? They start at the first row. And what's my delimiter? I want a semicolon. Once you do this and you go here, press enter, it will automatically refresh. So whatever I have here, I come back, I press enter, or you can do F9, it will start combining. Let's go and check this out. It is in P3, that's the macro. It is a function and it will return a string. You can see it here. Those are the parameters. So that's the sheet name, the column, the start row, and finally the delimiter. So I have my variables. I am assigning the sheet name to the sheet, so that's one variable. Then I go through the sheet row by row until I have a blank. And what I am doing is taking what I have, adding whatever I have in the cell, and finally the delimiter, which is my variable. Then I add the row plus one, and I continue until I have all the emails. Finally, this line is just to remove the final delimiter that we have. So if we just go back, you can see that the last one does not have a semicolon next to it.